Welcome. Now let's see a particular case study of how to bring all the I's number 12 income taxes all together into a written question. And this company is called Holes Group and we are required with reference to the above information explain to the investor. Okay, now our job is to explain to shareholders and that means not in very technical language but at the same time for every bit and pieces of the information presented you have to explain what's going on and why. The nature of accounting for taxation in the financial statement so which means the taxation includes the current tax payable based on the taxable profit the under over provision of the uh, income tax expense related to the last year's account at the same time the deferred tax implications now your answer should explain the tax reconciliations uh, and that will be the information presented by the examiner that's number one discuss the implications of current and future tax rates okay then and that means if there's a change in the corporate income tax rate uh, which means for example enacted before the year end or substantively enacted before the year end but will be applicable after the year end when we calculate the deferred tax implications we'll be using that rate to calculate the deferred tax and also provide an explanation for accounting for deferred tax in accordance with the IFRS so your answer should reflect these three parts so there are 14 marks here I will require my students to write 14 sentences with regards to those three point so from my perspective though the explanation of the deferred tax yes you can allocate possibly six marks in here uh, the current and future tax rates uh, one for the explanation from the IVIS, one for reference perhaps two sentences would be fine and other uh, perhaps six marks or six sentences related to tax reconciliations would be fine as well now let's see then host group prepares the account for the year ended 30th November X7 and that will be the year end right we'll be, we'll be seeing the tax rate whether it's before the year event or after the year event and what will be that rate. The director has been asked by an investor to explain the account for taxation in the account. Okay, so we are acting as the finance director possibly and we're going to be explaining that to the investor. The group operates in several tax jurisdictions and is subject to annual tax audit which can result in amendment to the amount of tax to be paid so this means the amount of taxes will need to be adjusted according to the result from the audit. And we are told that the profit from the continuing operations before taxation or the PBT or the accounting PBT is $300. And based on that, we times by 22% of the corporate income tax rate and that will be a tax expense in the profit or loss worth of 66 million dollars but that 66 million dollars would not be the same as the amount uh, that actually paid by the business to a tax authority because to a tax authority it says the amount of income taxes paid shown on the statement of cash flows is 95 so this means it creates approximately uh, the difference between 66 and 95 uh, so first of all may include uh, the deferred tax implications uh, which we need to be aware of now uh, um, we are reported the tax charge to be 87 okay, because there will be other adjustments needed the investor was confused as to why the tax charge was not the tax rate multiplied by the profit from continuing operations and that is prepared a reconciliation of the notional tax charge on profit as compared with the actual tax charge for the period um, now let's see then 
because we operate overseas, and that's why we've got differences in overseas tax rates, and bringing the difference here will be 10. And also for the non-taxable gains on disposal of the businesses, which means the income exempt from tax, and the tax would be 12, and we don't have to pay for that, and that means we're going to subtract it here. At the same time, we've got tax relating to the impairment of bonds as well. Okay, worth of $9. Yes, we, can, uh, uh, we have to pay additional tax on that uh, for the impairment of bonds uh, required by the tax authority. And other tax adjustments, yes, adjusting for other bits and pieces, we need to pay additional $14. So, in total, that would be 87 uh, showing in the in the account, but the amount of income taxes paid is 95. So possibly the actual tax charge of 87 as well as 95, the difference between these two, approximately to be $8 million, will be because of the under provision of the income taxes that we have to pay in the current year's account. So first of all, we need to explain those bases. So your answer, so for host group, first of all, should be split into, first of all, the tax reconciliation. Okay, for a tax reconciliation, what you need to do is to explain the figures line by line and explaining, for example, six sentences. I'm going to write it in bullet points, but you shouldn't do that in the exam, but you can uh, check out the full answer uh, of this question on your phone. So first of all then, uh, I'll be looking at, for example, the notional tax charge. The notional tax charge of this question of 66 million, that we take the PBT and times by 22%. But I have to explain to the examiner that includes the deferred tax implications, which is quite different from the, uh, the amount of taxes that we actually paid to the tax authority. Second, that $10 million, that $10 million related to the differences in overseas tax rate. So why $10 million arise was because that we operate in different parts of the countries. So it operates in different countries. And that's why we've got the adjustment here. And third, related to non-taxable gains. So non-taxable gains is simply B. We've got the income exempt from tax times by the tax rate. The tax rate we're going to be using 22% here. At the same time, we've got the tax relating to the impairment of brands and other tax adjustment of 14. So the adjustment in total we got uh, the impairment of brands, $9 million and also $40 million worth of $23 million that stands for the additional tax that the company needs to pay for. The business, or you can substitute that with the company's name, is called Host Group, needs to pay for. And then we've got a tax charge for the year, and it's different from the 95 in the statement of cash flows. So the difference is between $87 million 
and $95 billion also stand for the under provision of taxes relating to last year's account. And that's why we should pay additional of $8 million in the statement of cash flows to reflect the fact and this will be the uh, total taxes that we're going to pay for. So, uh, we're also told, let's see then, uh, the tax rate applicable is 22%, but it's a proposal in the local tax legislation that a new tax rate of 25% will apply in the country where it's domiciled, which means where our head office is situated, the tax law and the rate changes are enacted when government approves the legislation, which means in the future we'll be using that 25%. The government approved the legislation, but the current weighted average tax rate for the group is 27%. Ho's group does not currently disclose the opinion of how tax rates may alter in the future, but government is likely to change with a result of a government of a new government will almost certainly increase the corporate tax rate, which means the 25% will be used in calculating the, uh, the future tax, which means the deferred taxes. But currently, the weighted average tax rate was 27%. It's different from the one that we've been using, which is 22%. Uh, this could be due to lots of reasons. So, so one of the reasons could be we acquired lots of subsidiaries. We've acquired lots of subsidiaries and then the taxes that we're going to pay and divide it into the group's profit before tax. And since the group's profit before tax is less than it should be because we've acquired lots of, for example, the subsidiaries overseas, they are loss making and therefore pushing up the uh, weighted average tax rate a bit higher. And this could be one of the reasons that you can explain. So, with regards to tax rate, originally I planned to write two points, but now I'm going to write three points here. First of all, that 22% will be using that in to calculate the current tax payable. And that 22% We'll be using that to times by the taxable profit, if you like. It's not the accounting profit, but it's, but it's the taxable profit we'll be multiplying that by. And then 25% of the new tax rate will be used to calculate deferred taxes. So the reason why this will be a case is because according to IS number 12, with regards to the tax rate here, We've been using the rate before the year end, or which means we'll be using that rate that has been approved by the government before the year end, or substantively enacted before the year end. And there are multiple clues in the case. Uh, this would be a case of 25% has been uh, substantively enacted by the event because we're told that according to our experience that the new government will almost certainly increase the corporate tax rate to 25% and there's a proposal and we've got the experience here and that's why 25% we will say that it's substantively because it's supported by the evidence. We may also wish to explain the 27% of the weighted average tax rate as well. The weighted average tax rate of 27% will 
uh, is significantly higher than what we've seen of 22, as well as the new tax rate of 25%. So one of the reasons why this could be a case, you can add your thought here in your answer, is perhaps the host group has several loss-making subsidiaries and therefore pushing up the uh, weighted average tax rate a bit higher. So how many points are we written? Four and three and that would be seven and then finally uh, I'll be explaining to the examiner for the final of the deferred tax issues. Okay. Now, let's continue then. At 30th November 2007, which means at the event, uh, we've got deductible temporary differences of $4.5 million. And if that's the case then, for deductible temporary differences, we can use that $4.5 million and times by the corporate income tax rate and to recognize the deferred tax asset. But to what extent? Well, the answer is, uh, if we have sufficient taxable profit at some point in the future to utilize that deferred tax asset to offset against the future tax, uh, the, the future tax expenses, we can recognize the deferred tax asset to that particular extent. Uh, and we are told that deductible temporary differences of $4.5 million expected to reverse in the next year. So if this is the case then, you can reverse that, which means in next year, you can reduce that deferred tax asset. But you need to recognize deferred tax asset right now, so you can reduce that in the next year. So the key point in your discussion is whether or not you've got sufficient taxable profit at some point in the future to recognize that $4.5 million times by the corporate income tax rate to the, to the full amount of the deferred tax asset. And also we are told in addition that we've got taxable temporary differences of $5 million uh, which relate to the same taxable company and the tax authority and we expect 3 million will reverse in 20x8 and the remaining reverse in 20x9. And that means currently we can recognize that $5 million times by the corporate income tax rate as the deferred tax liability. And the deferred tax liability will be reversed in the next year by 3 million times by the corporate income tax rate. And then after that, 2 million times by the corporate income tax rate in 20x9. Now, in discussing about the deferred tax indications, the first step that you need to do is to say to the examiner, this just to be a timing difference, so you can call it as the temporary difference. The timing difference arising from the carrying value of the asset with regards to the tax base. And then, uh, you can explain what carrying value actually means. It's for those assets as well as liabilities in the uh, financial statement or in the SFP. The tax base for the asset, you can say about it is the amount deductible. against future taxable profit, or the carry amount minus the future tax consequences. With regards to liability though, on the other hand, the tax base could be the carrying value minus the future tax. And of course, with regards to income received in advance, You use carrying value minus future no tax. Okay. And then you're going to be applying the tax rate 
of 25%, which is substantively enacted before the year end, and the times by that difference, the times by that difference, it could be the taxable temporary difference are deductible temporary difference. For a taxable temporary difference, you can recognise the deferred tax liability. Deductible, you can recognise deferred tax assets. So, applying to the case, first of all, we can recognise the deferred tax asset by taking the deductible temporary differences of 4.5 million and times by the corporate income tax rate, and that will be the deferred tax asset. But we can also say to the examiner, as the next point, as long as we have sufficient future taxable profit, So you can recognise the full of the deferred tax asset to that particular extent. We can also recognise the deferred tax liability, and here will be 5 million, because it's the taxable temporary differences, and times by the corporate income tax rate. And in 20x8, which means next year, we're going to be reducing that deferred tax liability by $2 million and times by 25% or the latest corporate income tax rate. And in 2000 next or the next year after that, we're going to be reducing that deferred tax liability by the remaining $3 million times by the corporate income tax rate because it's the reversal of the taxable temporary differences. And of course, what you can do is when setting up the deferred tax liability, because we've got the deferred tax asset in uh, the first instance, and therefore it's entirely up to you to whether or not you're going to set up the deferred tax liability by taking five million dollars time by, times by the corporate income tax rate. Alternatively, you can reduce that deferred tax asset by this particular amount instead of setting up the deferred tax liability. It is entirely up to you. Because according to the presentation requirements, according to ICE number 12, it's entirely up to the entity whether or not to set up the deferred tax asset as well as the liability separately or to net them off. Okay? It is the company's accounting policy to do that. But this is so advanced from my perspective because how many points I've written? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've made enough points to pass this question, so I'll be stopping from there. And I hope you enjoyed this section of how to tackle uh, the case question like this. Very tough question, but very comprehensive question. Uh, if I were you, out of that 14 marks, I will aim to score at least 10 marks in the exam so I can get reasonable marks to pass this paper. Okay then, and look forward to seeing you in the next of our section and happy studying. Bye! APC, accounting for your future.